Hi there, everyone. Welcome to the live stream this evening. I'm so glad that you've joined me for the Paint Party live stream. We're at episode 61 of the live stream. I am, again, grateful to have you. I hope you had a great week and that everything is going swell in your part of the world. Um, it was uh, warmer over the weekend here, so I did get a chance to get out on the trail and do some hiking. Well, mostly it was sitting in my hammock, rocking in the breeze and reading, but I did get out on the trail and enjoy the weather. And then last night we got some uh, snowflakes, but it's already melted. Um, we'll have a little cooler weather, but we are headed towards spring. So I hope that it's starting to warm up wherever you are in the world and you're getting some nice spring weather. All right, so good to have you this evening. As I said, our live stream, for most of you who've been here before, know this, but it is very laid back, pop in, pop out, kind of open house style. Every week, I meet you here on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever you're streaming from, you can participate by commenting wherever you are, and we carry on a conversation as I paint, so feel free to ask questions, to make comments, suggestions as I go. I am just learning, so I enjoy having you all along for the ride, and your input is often very helpful, especially tonight, because we're gonna do something really fun. I talked about nice weather, but by saying really fun, I mean really challenging. So I'm gonna try something that has been a challenge to me over the last two years, and I really want to try it again because the only way to get better is to keep trying. So we're actually going to do a snow scene yet again this evening. It's different than any snow scene I've done before in that there is not a lot of color. There's not a lot of variation in the color. And so it's going to be really challenging to try to figure out how to make this painting work. Let me put it up on the screen for you so that you can see what we're painting and then we'll dive right in. While I'm doing that, I want to say hi to those of you that are joining. Lola, it's so good to have you as always. I see more, uh, more of you diving into the, or jumping into the room this evening, so it's so good to have you. Place that right over my head there. This will be your reference for this evening. Let me enlarge it a bit so you can get a really good view of that reference photo. Okay, as we do this evening, we're going to talk about this painting and I wanna talk about it a little bit before we jump in. Because there isn't a lot of variety in the, in the gradient of the color, we're really gonna focus on the layers. As we, as we develop this painting, we're really gonna divide it into three layers. The background, which is that kind of misty, ethereal, part in the back, the midground, which is kind of where the rock formation is, and then the foreground, where you have kind of the stream running forward and then some grasses in the front. By really delineating the gradients between each of those layers, this will help this painting, or my hypothesis is, that's what's gonna help this painting read as three-dimensional and read correctly. In the meantime, we'll have to figure out how to indicate the snow and the branches of the trees and all of these different things at the right value levels, but it's really going to be a value study more than anything because of the lack of variation in the color. So that's where we're going this evening. All right, since we have this set up, let me then bring you over and I'll just switch. Whoops, I don't want to do that. I want to do this, take that away, and I'll switch cameras so that you are not, so that you don't have uh, excessive motion sickness as I get this all set tonight for our for the painting, okay. All right, now I can switch you back. Hopefully this should work, whoops. And that is not working because 
we need to go over here and flip that and I think we need to let's rotate nope nope that's not what I want to do okay I think this is correct let me see I always get turned around okay yeah that is correct all right there you can see I think almost all of the painting let me adjust this I may make you motion sick anyway all right you can see the canvas and you can see the reference so as we dive in what we're going to do as I said we're going to focus on the the layer so the the first one we want to go to is the background layer so we're going to basically for this painting use only about four or maybe five colors white burnt umber maybe ultramarine blue and raw umber with the ultramarine blue and the raw umber that will help give us kind of that grayish color and mixing that with white it'll diffuse it so that we can get the different gradients then we'll bring in the burnt umber as our as some of the color for our rock formation we may diffuse that with some additional kind of yellow brown but we'll see we'll see as we go um all right hey bob g it's good to see you as always so glad you could pop in and i apologize for everybody who had trouble finding the live stream last week there was something in the settings i didn't set up correctly and it it was messed up but i got it switched around this week so everything should be good also before i forget next week there will be no live stream because i will actually be traveling so next week no live stream um, because i am going to be on the road but we should be back in i think it's april 4th would be the next monday after that so I'll get the dates on the live streams corrected to uh, show to um, I guess show that okay so let's get some paint on this palette and see if my hypotheses are correct I'm gonna put a little bit of this brown and a little bit of this blue all right that's going to be our gray so what we're going to try to do is we are going to mix this up because we'll need a really really light gray and we just want to Get just the least amount of color. Even mixing all that white in there, I'm going to turn this a little bit so you can see better. Um, even with all that white, it's still, I think, a little bit darker than I want but it gives us a good starting starting place okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my large brush and start to kind of just put some color on this and it's drying out already so we'll have to be cautious of that Welcome to those of you that have joined us in the last few minutes. I see some more people joining in. 
basically you haven't missed anything, but what we're trying to do is just to start to put some color onto this onto this uh, canvas. We are doing this basically in three stages, a background, mid-ground, and foreground. And this is going to be the challenge. Hey there, Marta. It is good to see you. I watched your video recently with Dr. Dr. Krakowiak. That was cool to see. Well produced. She's kind of my mentor from afar. She doesn't know it, but when I was teaching, I always looked to her for for uh, in ideas and insights for um, especially virtual virtual teaching because she really dove headfirst into that. And now that I'm doing corporate training, I'm using some of those same tools and techniques on the corporate side, which is really good because that's not usually what you get with corporate training. It's usually pretty dry and not interesting. So, all right, I'm mixing, as I said, this very, you can't hardly probably see it on the, on your, on the canvas, but just a very, very, very moderate light gray. And we're just gonna do this kind of where the background is, just to give us kind of a sense of the what's going on in this in this uh, composition. So we'll get that on, cover that as much as possible, and let it dry. Then what we'll do is we'll come back with just a little more tone and we'll put some, um, of the shapes and shadows in the back. That was me helping showcase Teresa's project. Awesome. Well, I think it's really helpful for people to see expert teachers like that to really, I don't know, get in ideas and even some of the things she said, I knew of some of the tools and I was like, oh, I need to go back and check that out. I need to put some more for my particular use cases. I want to try that out. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit, I said only a couple colors, I'm going to take some of this yellow ochre. It's not really a bright yellow, but it's just a little bit. Um, it's more brownish yellow. Very, very light. And I'm going to mix that with the white that is in the that comes into the foreground. So this brightest white snow down in here we're going to start to lay that in, at least the foundation, with just a littlest, tiniest bit of yellow. Just a little, little, tiny bit of yellow. The reason I'm doing this is something that is, it's more color theory than anything, but, or physics, our eye perceives depth as um, uh, what the colors that fall away for our eye first are the yellows and then the reds and then the greens and then the blues. So if I want something to look further away, i.e. this background, I want more of a blue cooler tone there. If I want something to look forward I, or closer, I want a warmer tone. So notice on my palette how they're both white but this kind of dark white in the, or d darker gray white in the shadow, and the white, the yellow white in the foreground create a different perspective. And so we're gonna put a little bit of that here in the foreground, just again, 
to cover our to cover our um, canvas and to begin to draw in some of this composition, even though it's all going to be, and this will be all the the rock formation. So we can begin. That really is working. Isn't that interesting? How you just put a little yellow. You'd never think to put yellow into white. But already, this looks like it's further in the background because, you know, because it is. And we can kind of see, okay, there's the suggestion of a river running through. So all of that to say... Cool little trick. That's why I say when people are like, oh, you're so talented or whatever, it's like, no, not really. It's just learning the tricks. It's just learning the tricks. Then we can go into the background and we can begin to put in some suggestions of shapes back here. Okay, I'm not going to overpaint that. Isn't that interesting? So that's a little trick you can take into your own art if you ever do art or you are inspired to do some painting. Yellows first, then reds and oranges, and then blues, then greens, and then blues. And that is how you can, the theory and the, and the actual practice of how you can begin to drop things back into the background when you want to create the perception of, the perception of, um, depth. Now what we're going to do is the exact same thing we did before. We're going to take a little bit of brown, a little bit of blue, and again our white. Quite a bit of white. This time I'm putting it next to the other so I can kind of see because we don't want to bring this too far into the foreground, but we do want some clear difference. So I do want it darker, the gray. Again, we're going to the background. Okay, let's see. I think that's going to be too much. We need a little darker. We'll put a little bit more brown. This dark color. There we go. I think that might do it. If it's not too dark. We'll see when we get it up there. Okay. Mix that. Then what we want to do is begin to... Now, some of these are completely... There is no... Like, we can't tell... I mean, we know those are trees back there, but you really can't see them. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our tree brush, our uh, organic kind of creates organic shapes, and we're going to go back in here and try to begin to put some of this in. Just some shadows, some suggestions that there are trees back in there. And I'm just dabbing it on the canvas so it creates some perceptions of depth 
or perceptions of shapes back there. And I'm leaving plenty of space as it comes forward for Sorry, I'm thinking. Plenty of space for these other things that are in the midground, these other shapes. Okay? So, there, by doing just these gradients, that's another little trick. By doing gradients of shapes, it tells us that it makes it look like there's like there are there's mist like it's really snowing hard in this case or there's mist in the background you would do this the same if you have kind of a misty um, situation remember the one we did a couple weeks ago that was kind of that valley that was all gradients of blue of the hills as it came forward that was what we were doing, basically. As so we created the perception, um, they were grays, and as they got closer, they were more dark. But that makes it then look hazy in the background. So that's what we're doing here. We're laying in that. Now, I want to bring in a little bit more color. Because we're coming down the mountain in the background, and it is just a smidge more clear as we come closer. So I want to give that perception as we come down in here that there's just a little bit more happening right there. Again, by doing this, just barely notice on my palette the gradient. Um, it's kind of hard to see with the shadow. Maybe I can hold it up here. It will be more clear. So this is what I did. This is the far background under painting. This is just a little bit darker at the top of the mountain. And this is as we come forward into the foreground of the background, if that makes sense. By just doing... Basically, a gray gradient, that's what's helping us come forward. Then we're going to begin to put in suggestion of more specific forms in here. And a lot of this will get painted over, but by getting this underpainting correct, it helps us when we go to lay color on. There's a big old tree in here, so we're going to put that in just so we can. And there's some here. We won't put that in, but we'll begin to do this. We won't put these on the left side because we really need to come in and put the rock and stuff in first. But I'm thinking about that as we go. All right, notice as it dries, it is looking really clear, like the background really recedes into the background, and then there's foreground in here. Now what I want to do before it dries, or try to do before it dries too much, is I want to come in and do some very simple detail work. So I want to take again some brown and blue and I'm doing just a hair darker than what was down there. 
mixing white with it because what I want to come do in the reference photo, we can see some specific tree trunks in the shadows. And that's what really as they come forward, we begin to see these trunks. So I want to put a couple of those in there just to, that may be too dark, but we do see those. As it comes forward, we see some of those and then definitely down in here. We'll get those later, but I wanted to at least, I think those are going to be a little too dark. So what we're going to have to do is come in wipe some of those out. Okay. All right. There we go. It kind of works, actually. We do have some, we do have some uh, additional trees now. So cool. That's so cool. I'm really glad this is working because I had no idea what to do or how to do this. I've, I've had this picture probably for three or four years. I took it much, probably three Christmases ago, maybe four, when I visited my folks, probably three. Um, and I was just like, I don't... I knew I wanted to paint it once I started painting. I was like, I know I want to do this someday, but I just don't have the skill and I didn't know. And then this week when I was deciding what to paint, I thought, well, let me try this. Can only go really badly and then I try it again some other time. Right? But it's working. All right. So we have some the basic composition um, plugged in. What I said I wanted to do, I didn't do, which is I wanted to do the same color begin to put in the uh, where the where our little creek runs. So we're going to call it right in here. I'm basically following the the stage of, or the place where I had not painted the uh, the yellow, so it has the blue underpainting underneath, the bluish underpainting. So, yeah, we'll just kind of do that. Take us off the we'll 
put some shadows in here just to begin to suggest what's going on there. Okay. As I come forward, I'm adding just a little bit more brown to this mix than, so it's a warmer gray. Again, everything we're doing is to suggest is to suggest um, depth. And so that is, I'm going to take the same thing because now we've done the background and I'm happy with that background. So I'm not going to touch that much more at all. Now we want to come to the mid ground, which is this bunch of this rock formation and this bunch of trees. What we're going to do is we're going to begin to just almost like a sculptor carve out that thing instead of actually drawing it in or painting it in we're going to carve it out of the out of the side or out of the canvas with basically using the same colors again and putting shadows in. So I'm coming in up here. We'll be put in some dark shadows up at the top, just wherever I see kind of these dark, there's like a tree that overhangs here and it goes all the way up. So we'll just begin to put some of these shadows up here. And that will draw our eye or the viewer into the background. I'm going to mix some more of this brown to lighten this so we have kind of a bit of contrast, even though it's very similar. We're going to put just a little bit more warmth into some of these places and carve around our the dark shadows start to create a suggestion of color tone. All right, we're about 30 minutes in and this is the first time we're really adding color. And this will help us carve out. Remember what I said about this, that um, the warmer colors as we come forward are the indicators that we're coming closer to the viewer. So that's, that's basically what we're doing in here. We'll just kind of paint this all in. We can do detail work later, but we just want to get our basic values working together. By using these three colors, basically, we end up with a real cohesive painting because they're basically all coordinated. Okay, we'll put this. And I'm just doing different strokes sideways and crossways so that we get some underpainting 
just the feeling of some, you know, some spots back in here. And I'm going to do the same in the creek, just complementing the cold, cooler with, because there is some reflection along the edge here that is reflected light, especially where there are bits of snow. Okay, I don't want to overpaint it, but now we'll take a little bit more of the blue and the brown, mix it together with the white. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? You guys could probably finish the sentence. I forgot to take photos. Da, da, da. And that is my habit. Even when I knew before this started, I was like, oh, I need to remember to take some pictures. Whoops, no, I don't want that. Photos. Okay, got a few photos. Good enough. Good enough. Okay, so this gray, what I want to start doing is putting in the, actually, I want to get this a bit, quite a bit darker, I think. I may have to start over, but we'll start it here. I want to put the darkest shadows at the top of this cliff. Just carving out the spots where there's some variation in this cliff face. I think I may have too much blue in this, but we can always take it back. Yeah, I do. Hey there, how are you my friend? So good to see you. I hope you are well.
All right. We sort of have the beginnings of a semi-decent painting here, I think. Now, oh, you know, the only thing I forgot was the over here. I'll diffuse or diffuse this with white, just a little white, but I still want it pretty dark. Is over here in the mid ground, we have kind of the We have the evergreen tree there, so we definitely want to just put some indication that that's there. Then we'll have the other This is all Back in here. There are trees back in here. So we'll put the suggestion of these trees. taking some of this out because I came way too far out with the the cliff needs to be more like this instead of like that. All right. We'll come back to the mid-ground mid and Okay, now we really need to think about this as we begin to create some more detailed work. I want to come in first, I think. Do some white, little blue, little brown, very light. Because I went overboard up above in my background, I took too much of this background out. So I want to put it back in because we have. All of this.
Okay. Okay, let's think. <laughs> hey, Anthony. Thanks for popping on. Hmm. I think I want to. What? Switch to a little bit darker or a smaller brush. Now, going into the background or foreground I mean no midground there we go background we're not going to touch too much but coming into this midground I want to start laying in some of the branches What is this called? The painting. Oh, like the place? This is Spearfish Canyon, which is just outside my town here. Um, about four years ago, it started raining, and I, we were driving through the canyon, stopped off the side of the road to take this picture. Or it started raining. Yeah. It started snowing, and we stopped to take this photo. So... Yeah, it is Spearfish Canyon. Spearfish Canyon, South Dakota, Black Hills of South Dakota. I hope that's what you were asking. We'll put this this tree that's kind of hanging off the side of the cliff there. Let me try to see if I can take some of this and draw some. So there's a branch that's coming right out here. Trees are still not one of my specialties, but we're getting there, right? Right. You're so magical with your hands. Actually, not so much. That's what is kind of like for me is a little disconcerting because everybody not everybody but people will say oh you're so talented and it's like no I mean yes there's a certain amount of stepping back and you know figuring out a certain thing but like it really is just figuring out a few basic things that work all the time like I was explaining, I think before you popped on, Anthony, I was explaining to everyone, whoops, that part of part of making this painting work is 
doing it in kind of three layers. So we had our background, which is really the gray, light, light gray, and then just dabbing the paintbrush with a little more gray gives the perception of kind of misty trees that we can't really see. And the reason that works is because there are, when our eyes are looking at something, the first color to drop away when you go in the distance is yellows, and then reds, then greens, then blues. So by warming up the color a little bit, meaning adding a little bit of yellow in the foreground, you can't even really tell it's yellow until it's up against a gray, then it's like, oh, then it's clear that things are sinking into the background, if that makes sense. And that's really the only way you can actually create depth perception here because things are so, you know, it's just so, there's such a lack of color because it was a cloudy day. And so, yeah, that's the deal. That is the deal. So yes, if there is a talent, it's just learning those few things and then being like, how can I do them better and better and better? And become a little more sophisticated in the way in which I execute them and that is just learning that is just practice there's no shortcut for that it's just doing it over and over watching other people who do it figuring out why something doesn't work then doing it again and again and again all right I'm putting some of this, like I said, the detail work in some of these branches, and then I'll go back and put in the needles, the pine needles, so that they look correct. Need a here on the edge is a Okay, and we're just going to do the same thing here because it's working, <laughs> mostly. We're going to do the same thing over on the opposite side to carve in some of these major tree structures. First, I want to go over here and do some of this little fine 
line work. Hi there, John. Good to see you. So glad that you joined. I'm giving, I'm making the suggestion of kind of these pine boughs by just doing basically dots on the canvas because it's so, so far away. It's really hard to do this even though I have a very pretty fine, this is a number one size brush. It's really probably needs a little more, needs finer brush, but this might work if I'm just very careful and don't overpaint it. I'll just dab here to give the perception of some of these pine bushes that are needled down here at the base of this. Tree. We'll see if this works. I'm not sure if it will. We may have to come back and doctor it up, but we will start with this. We'll see. Now I'm just kind of stamping my brush a little bit in here. And we'll do a few layers of this just so that we get some 
depth in this tree because we'll do just a little bit of green. But it'll be very, very subtle because number one, it's far away up on a hill, and number two, again, it's a cloudy day. So, okay, I think we're coming, we're getting there. So, stamp it. Yes, we are stamping. Sort of. Now, um, trying to decide where to go. I think I will do what I said a few minutes ago. Whoa, took a lot of paint out of the tube. Don't need near that much. But we will do some across the pond or across that little stream. We'll do some branch work. See if we can create the trees here. Okay, so there's this one that comes up. I want to do this kind of large um, and he kind of dies into the then there's one like in here that's pretty significant kind of has a Okay. Okay, then the tree in the back. So I think I want to do the branches that come up here. There's kind of a, and they come across this way, sort of up off the. All right, then we just do the key or the challenge are, is to do these so they're not not at all repetitive or consistent, I guess. They need to be just kind of
You don't want them to look like they're painted. We want them to look as organic as possible. So that's, that's our challenge. And this just takes a, a little bit of work. It just takes patience, really. Reloading your brush, not getting too anxious. That's probably why I'm not good at trees. It's a lack of patience. It takes just, takes just patience. It's not very exciting to watch in slow motion, but I appreciate you all hanging in there with me. Spearfish Canyon is one of my favorite spots in the Black Hills. Driving through it almost any time of year, but especially in the winter when the snow is on the when the snow is on the cliffs it really is remarkable it's a lot of fun it's just beautiful and if the sun comes out it's breathtaking I mean, it's breathtaking anyway, but... How do I keep from smudging the paint with my hand? Um, actually, because I'm not painting in oils, Anthony, which is a great question. So acrylics dry very fast, and that's also the downfall. Like, I'm constantly having to spray them or mix them with water because they are drying so fast I can almost not get them on the onto the canvas because they dry so quickly so I'm constantly having to but the advantage is they'll dry really quick when I'm this sort of situation when I'm trying to paint you know a significant portion of a painting when I switch to oils the live stream may have to change because we'll probably have to work on one painting over several sessions. Spearfish Canyon is beautiful even with the frozen waterfalls. Exactly. 
or maybe especially with the frozen. Yes, yes, I have. I haven't. I've been through this winter um, when it first, when Bridal Veil first froze, and then I was over at Spearfish Falls once, but it wasn't completely frozen. I don't suppose it freezes. I mean, maybe some years it freezes all the way, but it was still running. But definitely beautiful because there's parts of the parts of the falls that are the edges of course are frozen and We are heading to spring though. I have another picture of Spearfish Falls in uh, the fall. I almost chose it to paint this this week, but I didn't. And I'm glad now because this is a fun one to do. But I want to do Spearfish Falls in the fall. Bright, and it's right at dusk. So it was like bright sunshine over the falls. But they were, of course, in the shadow. Well, not of course for those of you that aren't from around here, but the the sun sets, they the falls come down over the rocks and the sun sets behind them, so they're kind of backlit. And then the trees were all bright yellow, so it was really, really striking. So I want to do that painting, but I love Spearfish Falls. Rough Lock is beautiful too, but we're lucky to have so many beautiful waterfalls so close to town. Someday I want to live somewhere that has water running through it or where I can be near the water, but... Typically, at least around here, those places, of course, are either already spoken for or very, very, very expensive. So I'm going to have to save my pennies to be able to do that someday. But that's all right. Gives me a goal to shoot for. Just kick them out. Yeah. Don't think that's going to be the way to win friends and influence people. Plus, it might kind of be illegal. Not kind of. Probably is really illegal. So we, we won't do that. Maybe I'll just make friends with somebody who has great property. And uh, enjoy theirs and then save up for my own at some point.
I'm trying to do darker and lighter branches at different points just because then we get also the feeling of variation and three dimensions that some of these branches are coming out from one side of the tree and then some are on the other side of the tree so that's the goal here is to some of them are lighter or they're in the mist maybe so they're not as visible Probably doing this all backwards, but that's okay. I should probably be painting in the underbrush first and then just putting in branches where I need them. But that's what I mean by learning as I go. Yeah, I definitely don't have the patience for this. Am I doing a zoomed in version? Um, a little bit, my, let me actually, since I'm not working at the top, in, let me adjust the camera. Um, my canvas is a little bit smaller ratio-wise, and the camera is right up on the canvas. So if I move it out like that, maybe that's a little better. I'm trying to keep the ratio as consistent as possible, but yeah, there's definitely going to be some variations in perspective and um, the fact that I'm some of the darker like these darker colors that I put in 
quickly or they will pop, pop out from the background because they're so um yeah because they're darker so there's that as well could be a few things that make it look a little less or a little more condensed than but it's mostly probably the uh the canvas is smaller than the the painting so yeah that's the deal. All right. The final branch or kind of thing I want to put in is some over here on the left hand side then. I want to do this tree comes down there. One we'll just put We're getting there, slowly but surely. Okay, now I think I want to go back and take a break from the branches and all of that. Go back, do some detail work on the rock face. All right, I want to do... Sorry, I'm in your space, in your, uh, whoops. I want to do a little bit of the darkest darks, basically. Nope, that's not dark enough. That is so kind. Thank you. Well, I appreciate all of you because... Otherwise, I'd just be here in my house talking to myself, which may or may not actually happen anyway, but it is always nicer <laughs> to have people you're actually talking to. So, all 
Okay, I am going to go in, let me move that so you can see. Now I want to put in this shadow that's at the top, it's almost black, at the top of the, the cliff. Put just on the edge of this tree. Carve in the shadow as dark as I can get it. There's some in here. Okay, the hypothesis with this is if I put in kind of shadow then I'll be able to do the snow around and on top of it and it will stand out because it will be shadow area We'll have to adjust this. That's way too dark for down in there. But the other thing with acrylics, the more layers you do, the better it looks. So we'll bring some of this shadow work down into the these trees down here, and we'll just layer. The reason I'm putting so much shadow on this that's not really there is because the, the snow needs something to stand out against. And if you don't give it something to stand out against, then it doesn't look like it's there, if that makes sense. So we need significant shadow or dark spots essentially, or just doesn't look like anything. So we'll come over here and do some kind of shaping of this tree back in here. Probably should have done this before, but that's okay. Again, just by putting a little bit of
stamp, as Anthony said on this. It gives us the perception that there's trees without really having to put a lot of detail work in. Just a few minutes left here. Take very, very little green. The very first green I've introduced and then dull it down with brown. Come in here to do some of this. This still needs to be very dark but I do want it to look different than the background. There we go. Just a little bit of chroma makes all the difference. I'm gonna do the same thing, except I'm gonna take a little blue to dull it down. Try to do up here. Every layer, every bit gives us more kind of character, suggests more detail than is actually there. So. That's what we're doing. And the more we do it, the better we get. Area we need to go to now is little green, little blue, mostly brown.
Remember what I said about the snow? It's got to have something to stand out against. So let's make it stand out. That's one thing I've been learning about painting snow. If you create dark shapes, and then you carve out around them, all of a sudden it looks like everything's covered in snow. And for the snow, I'm just mixing a really desaturated version of that green, which you can see on my palette there. I'm just adding white to it. It's not anywhere near actual white. Does my mouth move when you paint, when I'm focusing? I am not sure. It is very possible, Anthony. It is very possible. Maybe eventually when I'm really good, I can get a live studio audience and people will come in and watch in, the, <laughs> in my studio. But I am not that good. So people don't come watch me now. Plus, it's just way too easy if you're in the comfort of your own home. Why would you want to leave and go? Watch somebody paint. So notice, I'm going to bring it closer to the camera so you can see. Notice, whoops, there, how do I get light? Oh, uh, there's no light. But notice how when I just outline with that green, then it looks like there's snow in that tree. So that's the effect I'm going for, is just that there's snow up here. Then because we put in all those dark shadows, we should be able to go in and put snow there also. I'm going to put a little brown in it this time. But again, diffuse it with white, just so it's a little more peachy, warmer color, because that's what I see. Yeah, maybe not. Need a little blue. We'll just mix it all in, because I don't want it to look like the sun is shining up there. This allows us to basically, like a sculptor, carve around the edges. And that's what tells us, oh, this is a rock face. If that makes sense. Yes, yes it does, Steve. Thank you. Oops. Sometimes I talk to myself and then I acknowledge myself. But I'm not totally crazy that I know of. Maybe I am. It's very possible. Don't take my word for it.
as it dries it dries much darker so I'm doing more lazy crazy makes good paintings well I am well on my way then I will just keep on going I learned last year that one way to get good highlights, like sunny, sunny highlights in acrylics, is to do, you know, layer on top of layer. And it's the same, I think, with this snow. You do a layer and then it dries, then you come back and do another layer because it'll dry darker than it is and then you just keep adding to it all right so let's go down here and do the same thing kind of carve out the shape of this tree with the snow it's pretty heavy layered on here. Okay, now, little by little, we'll add, then we'll make it better. But I do want to go and do very carefully. These branches behind because they were really piled up with snow. And by doing that, then they, just having the edge of just a little bit of branch showing, then it's clear, oh, there's a branch there, but it's mostly snow on top. We do the same over here.
Just lots of patience. Just lots of patience. Lots of layers. Lots of variety. Small, varied brush strokes that create illusions. All right, just a few very loose brush strokes. Really help to define the shape of this rock face. Then I just come in with a, a few Shadow spaces needs a little more. I'm got tons and tons of brown on this palette, but a little blue needs to be a little colder. A little bit darker. Just make it really, again, the variety is going to be the that's what's going to make it look correct.
Oh my goodness, y'all. We are at the end of time, and I've just kept going. So let me get this creek reestablished at least. Then we'll wrap up real fast. Like most of our paintings, this needs some more detail work, but I'm very happy with how far we got tonight, as well as the challenge to myself. To, I've learned a lot doing this, and I said it was going to be challenging and fun, and it has been for sure. This is... Uh, Definitely a uh, a fun one. I'll have to really work this. But I think we have the foundation of something that could be really pretty. So I'm just going to leave it there. Now notice, I just want to point out what, how we started. We said we had to do this in three layers, the background, the midground, and the foreground. And we started with our foundation of the background, very cool. You can see, again, because the yellows, reds, etc., fall out first, and then the last is the greens and the blues. So the background is that bluish, and that's what makes it look like it's in the background. As we come forward, the very last thing I added was the kind of yellow tones in here. And even though there's not very much yellow or green in the rock, really, it looks like it is, which pops it forward. And then all of a, all of a sudden, now we see the color of the snow that is much more warm than when it was just those two layers on. I will now be able to go in and put kind of shadows over that warm snow, and that will give it three dimensions. You can already see that happening here where there's the warm kind of yellow tone and then the bluish kind of gray tones of the shadows. That will give us some three dimension to the snow as opposed to just painting it white. There's actually no pure, no pure white on this, on this, painting. So let me go back to, there we go. That way I can move y'all back here without making you sick. And I can get that set up. Okay. Good deal. Let me take down the reference photo as I say. Oh, hey, Heather, thank you. Trees are hard, but looking good. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, appreciate it. For sure, it is a challenge. Okay, let me take my that away, and then I will go back here. Okay, so I want to say thank you for those of you that stuck in till the end. We've gone a little over tonight, but I really appreciate you being here. Again, next week, there will be no live stream. I'll be traveling, so no live stream next week. I think it's the 28th or 30th, something like that. Next Monday, no live stream. The next one that we will have will be April 4th. Can you believe we're already into April? I'm hoping by that time, that's two more weeks, I'm hoping we will have true sp spring weather heading to the Black Hills. But... We were getting little teasers here and there, so I'm really uh, not going to complain too much. All right, it's been a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you in two weeks on April 4th, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, for the 62nd episode of the Paint Party Livestream. Everyone, have a great night, and I will see you next time.